So I am going to go over the concepts of both of them and their, their positives and negatives. And generally speaking, why standard deviation is used more. However, I'm not going to go over a step-by-step -step example of how to calculate them because I've already done that in two smaller videos. I am not trying to make this video super long. My point on a lot of my videos is to make sure that they're fairly short. I will link them in the video and in the description. When it comes to the mean absolute deviation, these numbers that I've used in other examples, I'm also going to use them here. And I'm going to give you the, the answers to both of them. So the MAD for those four numbers is 3.5. The standard deviation is 4.397. And the reason why that's important is because you can tell one is drastically different from the other. The other seems a little bit more intuitive based off the formula. Well, you know, I'm only looking at the deviation between uh, each observation in the MAD. Why do I have to look at the square of the standard deviation and then divide it by n minus one? So why is that there? And then do the square root. It's a trap. Those are all really confusing to someone who's trying to learn this for the first time. And it's completely understandable because it looks like a monster. <laughs> so there, there are justifications for all of those things. But let's focus on mean absolute deviation first. Mean absolute deviation is pretty intuitive. You're just trying to look at the average deviation from an absolute sense. So that means if the deviation is negative two, such as five minus seven, you're gonna just drop the negative and you just add them up as all positive numbers. And a similar thing happens in standard deviation because instead of doing the absolute value, you're squaring it. Whenever you square something, it makes it a positive it's, if it's a negative. So both of them kind of have a similar aspect there, but the mean absolute deviation kind of cu cuts right to the chase and divides by the observations, which is very similar to what the mean does. And then it just gives you 3.5 which is pretty straightforward. So you're looking at all these numbers and saying, okay, the mean absolute deviation is 3.5. And I can see that with the numbers given. Whereas with the standard deviation, you're doing like two extra steps and you eventually get 4.397. And like, what even is that? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that is a crazy look to what you're trying to do. And so, um, <laughs> sorry, it's just... It is a, it looks crazy, um, but it's, uh, that, that's what it is. The standard deviation will usually be bigger because of its squaring function, as opposed to an absolute function that the mean absolute deviation has. So the mean absolute deviation will always be equal to or less than the standard deviation. And in a similar way, the standard deviation is more susceptible to outliers because you're squaring either a bigger number or a smaller number that is significantly different from the rest of the, the pack, essentially. And so if the average is like around three and you're squaring a number that's like 12, it's going to have quite an influence on the end result. So if the mean absolute deviation is more straightforward and intuitive, then why do we use the standard deviation? And why do you probably know the standard deviation more in terms of familiarity than the mean absolute deviation. And the answer for that is because the standard deviation is directly associated with the normal distribution and the mean absolute deviation is not. And so when you're looking at things as a series of events, the, the standard deviation is significantly more applicable than the mean absolute deviation. You may have seen this before, but it's the empirical rule understanding. You're looking at all of those lines and how they separate each one of those lines is a standard deviation and it identifies in particular ways the difference from the mean in that distribution. The normal distribution in calculations approximates how we understand what's going on. So for example, the ACT score, if you've taken the ACT, is something that is often given in a percentile understanding. So you'll get your number uh, for your score, but you'll also be given a percentile and that percentile is a normal distribution application and it uses the standard deviation. So that's why you've heard the standard deviation more than the mean absolute deviation, because the standard deviation is just applied more. Although the mean absolute deviation is more intuitive, 
And so that creates an interesting aspect here, doesn't it? Where something that is very intuitive, that makes sense in a very short-term manner, is not actually used when applied in mass. So I'm going to have a very interesting video that I haven't done anything like soon because it's going to deal with applying statistics in a very real world sense and how some people, especially those that are CEOs, uh, may apply that information. So stay tuned. Uh, I hope you like movies and uh, stay nerdy, my friends.